let's take a look on how we construct a multiple linear regression model in R. Um, it's not very different from what we did when we uh, constructed a model based in just one independent variable. Um, as always, um, first read in your data. So uh, I constructed, I have a CSV file on my desktop and I construct a, a data frame called districts. Let's view and attach our data. So view districts and let's attach our data. Attach districts. All right, so our dependent variable is votes. Um, that is the number of votes um, for Pete in the voting district in percent. And we have age, density, and religion as the independent variables. We want to explain the percentage of votes for Pete by looking at the mean value of age, the population density, and an index number for religiousness in the single voting districts. So let's construct our multiple linear regression model. You basically do the same thing as you did in the simple linear regression case. All you do to include more independent variables is to add them. So we put in model one, assignment operator, LM for linear model. We want to explain votes and we put in the curly uh, operator in here. We want to explain votes by age. And to add another independent variable, simply put in a plus density and religion. Okay, so let's have a look at our model. Summary model one. Okay, um, since we have more than one independent variable, I would suggest to evaluate the model by the by looking at the adjusted R squared value. Okay, um, because we have more than one independent variable, uh, take a look at, at adjusted R squared, not simply R squared. Okay, uh, because it takes uh, into account um, and then you have more than one independent variable. Okay, so 0.89 seems like a pretty good model. All in all, the model is also significant. You have a p-value for your entire model. Um, and let's have a look at our coefficients over here. So as always, we'll use a 95% confidence interval. And it seems like age and religion are highly significant. So age is significant and religion is highly significant while density is only significant on a 90% confidence interval. Um, since it has no exp explanatory power, we can exclude this variable. So let's construct another model. Model two, assignment operator, LM, we wanna explain votes by H, H is still, H is significant, so uh, the variable H is highly significant. Let's include H in our new model. But since density is only significant on a 90% confidence interval and we are using a 95% confidence interval, let's exclude this variable. So we, only, we are only using H and religion. This is our new model. Um, let's evaluate our new model. Summary, model two. Okay, this looks much better. So first of all, adjusted R squared is still very high with 0.88 and our coefficients are all highly significant. So our coefficients are highly significant. How do we interpret this? How do we interpret the coefficients? Um, the coefficient for H is equal to 0.51 and the coefficient for religion is equal to 0.42. It says that if we increase the mean value for H in a single voting district by one year, while the index number for religiousness stays the same, the number of votes for Pete increases by 0.51%. The same goes for religiousness. If we increase the index number um, for religiousness by one unit while controlling for H, the number of votes for Pete increased by 0.42%. What does that tell us? The older and the more religious the voters in a voting district are, the higher will be the voting outcome for Pete. Remember what I've told you. Um, remember what I've told you. you we, what you have to do when choosing your independent variables. They aren't allowed to correlate heavily with each other. So they must not correlate heavily with each other. Let's check the correlation between age and uh, religion. So you put in core for correlation. And we want to check the correlation between H and religion. Okay, there you go. 
Um, 0.81 is pretty high, but low enough to include uh, them into our model. Um, as a rule of thumb, I would argue that a correlation coefficient of 0.9, then things start to get a little messy. Um, there are ways to merge multiple variables into one, but we'll get uh, to there. Uh, we'll we'll get there later. Um, now, since it only catches the unique impact um, and bo of both variables, um, and it tends to represent the same phenomena, leaving aside one of of the two variables should raise the explanatory power of of the variable left. So, if you if you have age and religion. And the correlation is 0.81, so they tend to explain the same phenomena. Leaving aside one of these um, uh, uh, independent variables should raise the explanatory power of the other one. So let's exclude religion. Let's put in a third model. Model 3. Assignment operator. Linear model. Votes is explained by H. Let's evaluate this model. Summary model three. Okay, there you go. Um, as you can see, our model is still able to explain quite a lot um, with uh, R squared of 0.077. Um, also, the coefficient for H is still higher and is highly significant. It's highly significant and it is higher than before. So in model two, the um, coefficient for h was 0.51. Now it is 1.12. Um, that is because it also captures the impact of the variable we left outside of the model. So what would be the best model? Well, I chose model 2 since all variables are significant and it has a pretty high adjusted r squared. Model 1 has a redundant variable we, no we don't need and model 3 is more general than model 2. So I would go and use model 2 um, for explaining the votes Pete gets in the uh, single voting districts.